Hi, and welcome to the eighth video in our PowerShell 7.2 for beginners tutorial series. In the last couple of videos, we've gone over some different conditional statements like the if, else, if, else, and switch statements. Now we're actually going to be taking a look at some loops and we're going to be starting off with the for each loop. So let me just start off with like just the basics of loops and why they are so useful and relevant in the programming world. So there might be times where you have to repeat a certain action, um, maybe based on some different inputs, but the action that you're doing is most like mostly the same. Uh, maybe just the content of the action might be a little different. Like example, what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to be showing you how to create a bunch of folders. Um, if you have a text file that has all the names of the folders you want to create, and it'll go ahead and create them for you. Um, we're going to code it first, um, all manually. Uh, so going through the folder iteratively without a loop. And then we're going to see uh, the for each loop. We're going to see three different ways to create a for each loop to accomplish the same task. Uh, you're going to see they're, they're all pretty easy. Uh, they're all very similar. Uh, there are some performance differences in some of them. Uh, the last one's the last one that we're going to see is going to be the fastest. Uh, so let's actually just go ahead and let's get started here. So what I have is I have my folder with my script here. I just named it for each dot ps1. And then what we have here is we have a uh, text file containing some folder names. I just named them some names of some departments that you would probably have in any a uh, company really like any IT company or uh, probably like any company these days probably all have these uh, these positions. Um, and then I have this folder called share and this is where I want to create all the folders. So of course, um, the most manual way to do it would be to come in here and type these out. Now, of course, this could go very fast, um, depending on how good you are at typing but also just leaves it place for a bunch of errors. Um, so it's not a super great, um, a great method, uh, that's for sure. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at doing it through code here. So what we're first going to want to do, as you probably guessed it from the last couple of videos, first, we're going to want to grab all the folder names here. So what we're going to say here is we're going to say a file path and we're going to go ahead and we are going to copy this file path. Now, as you guys remember, I showed you guys a little trick for this last time. Um, if you just come in your visual studio code and right click on that file and just hit copy path and you can actually just go ahead and paste that in there. That's the easiest way that I, that I find anyways, for getting a path of a file. And then what we're going to do is we are going to get the content of that file so we can get all the different folder names. Uh, so we're going to call that one uh, folder names and let's go ahead and let's do a get content and we're going to do on the path file path. All right. So let's go ahead and let's run this here. Perfect. So that actually works out great. Uh, if we go ahead and look at the folder names now, we're going to see that we get all the folder names here. Now, as we've seen in the array video, um, and we know that the get content pulls all this data back in an array. So if we actually go folder names and we go square bracket zero, uh, we'll get the first item in the list, which is marketing. If we put one, we will see that we get engineering uh, and we have a total of uh, five here. Uh, so we're going to have to go up to number four because we have a zero based index. So what we actually want to do now to create these folders is to actually go ahead and let's just say uh, new dash item. And then we're going to say uh, path. Now here we're going to put in a path of where the folders are going to go. So what I actually like to do in this case is 
I like to put a folder, folders path, and we are going to store them all to that share folder. So let's right click on it. Let's copy the path. Let's paste that in there. And let's just add a little slash here. Just this way it, uh, it's already, we're already putting it in, in the folder. So that's going to be perfect. Um, actually, we're going to remove that slash. Well, we actually don't need it in this case. I apologize for that. Um, so in the new item here, what we're going to do is we're going to put in the folders path uh, for the path. And then we're going to use the name parameter here. And we are going to put in uh, folder names zero because we're going to be creating a folder with the name of marketing. And then the last one is going to be item type. And that is going to be a directory. So we create a folder. Uh, so let's just see what this does. So if we just run all of this, it should create that first folder marketing. So now if we actually go ahead and we paste this five times. And we run this. As you can see, it creates the file, the folders for us. If we open this up, we get all the folders. It created it pretty fast. Um, it took us about five lines of code. Now we have this issue though, if we, you know, maybe add another one here. So let's just go testing. Let's save that and let's run this again. Now, of course, it's not going to add that testing because we didn't add a fifth line to it. And we're getting errors saying that the folders already exist. Um, so let me just copy and let me paste this once more. Let's add that in there and let's run it. Now we got the testing, but we still have all those ugly errors. So what you would probably want to do in this case um, is like an if uh, test dash path. And then you put in for the path here. And you would put folders path slash and then folder names uh, zero. Uh, but because this is actually you're using these square brackets, as you're going to see, these are taking in as a string. So we're just going to have to wrap that in a variable here. And then we can actually say if the test path is equal to false, we're going to run that. So now we would need to do this for all the items uh, because now it's fine. Um, and test path, but we just need to wrap this as well here. Uh, so now if we go here, we're going to see we don't get any errors. And if we do an else uh, and we put in our else here just to see if it executes, we can do write output folder exists. So if we run this here, we're going to see that we get the folder exists. We don't get an error message or anything. Now we would have to do this for all five. As you could tell, now we're getting really, really long. It's going to take us forever. And if we have a file of, let's say, 100 or 200 folders that we want to create, this could take a very long time. It would actually probably be faster to, at that point, uh, create them by hand. Uh, but let's actually go ahead and let's take a look at the loops, which is the main purpose of the video here. So what we're going to want to do is let's get rid of all these. Actually, let's put these at the top here. So. Um, Actually, we're just going to get rid of them. We really don't need them. We're going to use the for each. So what we're going to do is to create our first version of the for each here. We're just going to type in, you probably guessed it, the word for each. And then open and closing parentheses. And then in here, we're going to say dollar sign, dollar sign name in folder names. And then after the parentheses, you're going to do an open and close curly brackets. And then in here, what we're going to do is we're just going to put dollar sign name. Um, what this is going to do, this is just going to output what the name dollar sign name variable is. So let's go ahead and let's run this here. 
as you can see, we actually output all the items of our array. So this will actually loop through iteratively um, all the items in the array uh, sequentially and assign them to the variable name for each one. So it'll go through, it'll be, okay, marketing is the first one, assign marketing to name. It does whatever is in the block here. It goes to the next one. It assigns engineering to name and it keeps going. So what we can actually do is we can actually take this code. We could paste this in here. And instead of referencing folder names zero, all we need to do is reference name and then put name here. And let's go ahead and let's just delete all these folders. And what we're also going to do is we're just going to delete the testing. So now we have our exact copy of what we had before. So we created our, our folders. If we run it again, we don't get any error messages. We just get the message that the folder exists. If we go ahead and we put testing in here, we run it again, it's going to create testing again, not throw any errors. So this is perfect. Like it didn't take us any longer. We didn't have to add a line afterwards. I can actually go ahead and let's just put uh, testing two, testing three, testing four, testing five, testing six. And we can run this code again, not making any changes, and it will just add all the folders for us. So as you can see, the for loops, the for each loops come very, very much in handy. Uh, but let's go take a look at a few other ways that we could write out this for each loop. Uh, so this is the first method. The other method is using the for each object commandlet and our pipeline. So what we could actually do here is we could take our folder names and then we're going to pipe that to a for each object and then in here we're going to have a parameter called process and then in here we're going to do a open and close curly brackets we're just going to put that in here and then all we need to do once again is just copy this code in here and we're going to have to make a slight modification so as we know from our pipeline video anytime that we pass in something through the pipe to reference that, we need to use the dollar sign underscore. So where we used to call it name, we're just going to call it dollar sign underscore. And just to show you guys maybe what that kind of looks like before we actually test it out here. So if we just do the folder names, pipe it to for each object, and let's just do a write output dollar sign underscore. If we actually run this here, as you can see, we get all the items in our array. So let's actually just go ahead. Let's uh, let's uh, remove all those extra ones here. We really don't need that anymore. Um, so let's go ahead and let's reload the data in here. And as you can see, now we get our folder names with this dollar sign underscore. So let's just go ahead. Let's cut and let's paste that in here. So we have our same if statement. We have the exact same code, just really with dollar sign underscore here. And we can actually run this and it creates all of our folders. Now these two pretty much run at the same efficiency. If you were to time them using the measure command, uh, they would perform uh, pretty much equally. Uh, now, of course, since we're only using five folders, uh, we wouldn't see any difference even if there was um, just because that size is too small um, i would always say like anything over 100 is probably we're going to start seeing the differences and even that really depends on the processing power of your computer if you have tons of processing power uh, it might not really be that much of a difference anyways um, so let's go ahead and let's look at the last and fastest option for the for each here so the last one here is going to be dollar sign folder name. So once again, we start off with our array and we actually use a dot method. So if we do a dot and we start typing F, we actually get a for each here. And it's going to start with a open parentheses. We're just going to close that parentheses right away. I'm just going to hit enter once. 
And what we're going to do in here is we're going to do an open and closing curly brackets and also just do that. Now, what we can do is we can also do once again, the right output here. Now we're not using the pipe, but we are using a dot method, uh, which is PowerShell kind of takes it the same way for getting the values. So all we need to do to get our value is the dollar sign underscore in this case. So if we actually just show this, we get all of our names, as you can tell. So all we need to do is copy this if statement in here to this one. And we will see that this creates all the folders as well. Now, this is going to be your fastest option. If you ever have a large for each, or if you have a for each um, from an array, uh, I would definitely recommend using a dot notation. I know in my videos, I don't really um, use the dot notation. I usually use uh, this for each just for readability for the videos and just makes it a little bit easier for people that haven't watched the beginner series to kind of understand what I'm doing. Uh, but there might be some videos where I might use for each depending on the size of my array. Um, and for production environments, uh, I would suggest using this for each. It is a lot faster than all the other options. Again, it's faster. Um, it really comes down to how your company codes and how you want to code. If everyone is using, everyone should be using the same standard. Uh, so if everyone's using this for each, I would just keep using this one. If you guys are using this one, the for each object commandlet, I would just keep using that one. If you guys are already using the dot notation, then I would keep using the dot notation. As long as all the all the scripts are written in a very similar fashion, it makes it easier to for people to kind of go in one script and go into another one and see how it's written and see what it does and understand it quite quickly. Now this isn't too vague so they would probably still be able to read it but it's just nice to have it all standardized but that is it for for each uh loops i would definitely recommend any programming scripting uh coding worlds definitely use uh loops we're going to be seeing methods a little bit later on in the intermediate course um which are another great tool to reuse code uh, but if you're finding yourself copy pasting lines of code to just execute that line multiple times, you're probably better off either using a, a for each loop or a for loop that we're going to see in the next video or methods. Uh, you should never really be just writing the same lines of code over and over again. There's probably a better way of doing it. You shouldn't have to write your code um, iteratively. It not efficient and it just makes a lot more typing for you and it opens you up to more uh, errors just because you are typing more so your chances of typos are a little bit higher so i hope that helps you guys for the for each loops uh, the next video we will be seeing are the for loops and the while do loops so those are two different types of loops that we're going to be seeing in the next video so be sure to stay tuned for that. If you guys have any comments or questions, please let me know down below in the comment section. If it's something specific, I'll try to answer you directly. If it's something a little bit more generic, um, I'll still answer you and I'll probably make a video this way. It benefits a lot more people. Uh, also be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button as well. And also don't forget to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.